Hi everyone, today I want to talk through all the types of Maui's I know about. There are common ones that most people know about and have seen in fish stores, but there are also many rare colors and types found in nature that you likely do not know about. I wanted to provide an updated list on the varieties you might want to look for when considering your next Maui. Before we start the list, I want to give you some quick background. There are many variations and combinations of Maui types and colors, so I broke this list into two sections. The first list describes specific types. So these differ by scientific name, body shape, or tail shape. Then next, I decided to list color variations. I had a lot of fun researching all the types, and so I hope others enjoy this detailed list. Anyway, let's get into it. The first one here is the common molly. So some other common names are either short fin molly or regular molly. And these are the mollies most commonly found in chain stores. So if you see it just named blank molly, so Black Molly, Silver Molly, Dalmatian Molly, you can assume it's common. The origin is the most common to Mexico. They're gonna be the most common Molly you can find. Care level's easy. The size to get to is about three inches. They'll live between three to five years on average, and they'll cost you anywhere from four to $10 on average. For pH, you'll want pH of 7.0 to 8.5, a temperature of 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and a hardness of about 15 to 30 degrees general hardness. Next is balloon molly. So some of the common names are balloon belly molly or short body molly. For the origin, they're a captive bred species and the name comes from their body shape. Overall, they're very common. You can find them in local fish stores, chain stores, and all sorts of sources online. For their size, on average, they'll get to three inches and the care level and parameters is very much similar as common. The lifespan is a little shorter, on average 1.5 to 2 years, but 4 is definitely possible. And this is because they're more likely to get disease due to their shape. These mollies will cost you slightly more, on average 5 to $10. Next up we have the liar tail molly. So this is a tail morph of the common molly. Another common name could be a veil tail molly. I would expect most of the sources that it be captive bred, although sources do report it found in nature, for example in southern United States, Mexico, and Guatemala. As far as rarity, they're again very common. Generally, they'll get up to five inches, although three inches is possible depending on the color. The care level and parameters are the same as a common molly, and the cost is slightly more than common molly. You can expect five to ten dollars on average. Now we're going to talk about the sailfin molly. So this is mostly common in North America, from North Carolina to Texas, also popular in Florida and also in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It's pretty common, but less than the prior ones we talked about. On average, it can get the five to six inches with five being most common. The care level and parameters are the same as a common molly. For cost, you're looking at a little bit more from five to $15 on average, but if there are large or rare colors, you could probably see them for 20 to $30. One note is this molly will definitely take a larger tank size I'd say 20 gallons minimum, but really you want a 29 gallon or larger tank for this type of molly. And males are definitely the stars of this variety. They're self in the pops when they're trying to breed with a female. I could definitely see just keeping all males in a tank. Next, we have the giant self in molly. This is also called the Yucatan molly, and more commonly I've seen that online. The origin is mostly from Southern Mexico, and as far as rarity, they are pretty rare. The care level I'm gonna put is moderate to difficult, more so than other mollies at least. Hardened alkaline water is more important. As far as temperature, it's reported from 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 to 28 Celsius. The minimum is higher than the other mollies we talked about. For size, six to seven inches is common with females being larger. And cost, there is limited data, but I'd expect anywhere from five to $30. And again, you'll want a larger tank just like the self and molly. Really 29 gallons plus is almost required for this species. Going on to the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the dwarf molly. Another common name is the mini molly. So the origin is in North America, Mexico being most common. It's pretty rare, I couldn't find any sources online selling it. For size, it gets to between 1.5 to 2 inches. The temperature and pH recommendations are slightly different from common mollies, with the pH being from 6.5 to 7.5, temperature from 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Cost again, there was limited data. I found one auto stock site for $5, so I'd guess anywhere from $5 to $30. And usually they're in the natural color, which is a dark silver or grayish color. 
Next, we have the Amazon Molly. So this originates from Mexico and Texas. I am surprised it's not in South America given the name. As far as rarity, it's rare again, and most of the upcoming species will be. The size is between two to four inches with two and a half inches being most common. Very limited data on care parameters, so I recommend you follow the common molly care, ideally on the hard or alkaline side. Lifespan is between two and five years, and I couldn't find much data on the cost. For color, they're usually a shimmering platinum color. The Atlantic Molly. So other common names are shortfin, and this is a different scientific name from the common molly that can also be called shortfin, or the cave molly. They originate from Guatemala and Mexico. Again, they'll be rare. Size will average between two to four inches, although some sources say only 1.6 or 2.4 inches. The pH will be seven to 7.5 in its natural habitat, but I'd guess up to 8.5 would be all right if you acclimate it well. Temperature will be 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and the cost will be between three to $10, although I did only find that from a single source. Next, we have the Liberty Molly. The origin is from El Salvador. It is very rare, but it is more common than some of the prior types we just talked about. I did find multiple online listings, although almost all of them are not in stock. I'd say care level is moderate, just because you need to know more about this molly than other species. It's less captive bred and known to be semi-aggressive and a fin nipper. On average, it gets to two to three inches, and again, the other care is similar to common. As far as cost, there's limited data, but I have found some sources that were listing it for $10. And as far as color, it's silvery with blue and orange specks. The fins can be black, blue, red, or yellow, with the males showing more color overall. Next up, we have the Costa Rican Molly. The origin is from Central America, Costa Rican being most common. It's going to be a rare Molly, and the size is anywhere from three to four and a half inches on average. The care is likely going to be similar to common, but limited data exists on that. I couldn't find any online vendors, so I don't have any details on the cost. And as far as color, it's usually a silvery green with spots on its fins. Next, we have the Pacific Molly. Another common name is the Mexican Molly. The origin is from Mexico to Panama, and it again is gonna be pretty rare, and the size it's gonna to get to on average is three to four inches. Care will likely be similar to common, but again, limited data on this type of molly. There's a wide variety in color for this species, usually a mix of silver, black, and yellow orange, and there is more color on males. The Pitan Molly, or Pitan Molly. I have to look up how to pronounce that. So it's a variety of a sailfin molly. It originates from Southeastern Mexico, Central America, most commonly Belize and Guatemala. It's rare, and I didn't find any online vendors. On average, it gets up to four to five inches, and care is likely similar to a sailfin molly. As far as natural color, it has a gray-brown body. The Caca Molly. Other common names are the South American Molly. It originates from Panama, Venezuela, and Colombia. It's again going to be rare, with males only getting to 1.2 inches and females getting to 2.4 inches on average. Care is going to be similar to common, but again limited data. I did find one for sale for $4, so I guess the range would likely be from $3 to $10. As far as look, they're silver with some blue sheen, and they kind of look similar to a guppy in my opinion. The Balasas Mali. Another common name is the Malins Mali. It originates from Guerrero, Mexico. It's going to be rare with an average size of 3 to 4 inches, and I did find a pH and temperatures that's different from a common Mali. With the recommended pH from 7 to 7.8, the temperature from 78 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Could not find any online vendors, and as far as natural color, it's a short fin Mali with a silvery color. Mangrove Mali originates from Central America in the range from Southern Mexico to Northern Honduras and Colombia. It's gonna be rare with an average size of three inches and care likely similar to a common Mali. Again, no online vendors, but the natural color of it is silver with faint orange spots on the side. Catamaco Mali originates from Venacruz, Mexico. It's again gonna be rare with a size on average of four inches I did find parameters listed online that differ from common molly, with the pH being from 7.2 to 8.2, temperature from 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and hardness from 6 to 30 degrees general hardness. And as far as looks, it's a short fin molly with a brownish tan color. Now we're going on to the next section. So that was all the types of mollies that differ by either scientific name or body type 
or fin type. So a lot of them were mollies found in nature. The first few we named, that being the regular molly, balloon molly, liar tail molly, and cell fin molly, those are the most common ones you'll find in stores. And those are the most common ones you'll find a lot of different colors of. So now I did want to go through different color variations of mollies. And we're going to start off with the black molly. So the color is full black. There's sometimes a little yellow on the edge of the fins. It's very common. You can find it in almost any store, including local fish stores and chain stores. It's known to be on any of the common types, that being a regular molly, balloon, wire tail, cell fin, or even combinations of the different tails. Next, we have the Dalmatian molly. So as far as the color, it's going to be a white body with black spots throughout it. Sometimes there can be red, gold, orange, or gray spots mixed in. So again, going to be very common with the founder chain stores and often local fish stores. And again, it can be in any known captive bred type. Then we go on to silver mollies. So it does have a few other common names, platinum and white mollies. They could differ, you could see both at a store, but generally they seem to be the same and look the same, so I grouped them all together. The color and pattern is all white, and it usually has a nice shiny look or a sheen to it. As far as rarity, it's very common, and again, it can be for all captive bread types. Now we have wild mollies. So a lot of the types listed in the first section are different natural types of mollies. A lot of them will have a natural color, so I'm calling that the wild color. Generally, that's going to be gray, bronze, or tan, or even sometimes silver. And as far as rarity, it's not as common in the store. It's mostly common in nature, and it's not going to be as sought out of because the fish aren't going to look as stunning. So probably doesn't sell as well in stores, is my guess. As far as known types, the default color for most types in the first section, it'll be slightly different for each type, and it's also common to get when you're crossbreeding. Many of my black and silver hybrids looked wild with an almost gray or tan look to them. The next color variation I want to talk about is the creamsicle molly. So this is an orange molly with a white underside, usually in a gradient. It's going to be pretty common, sometimes found in local fish stores and easy to find online, but a little less common than the prior ones. And it has been known to be on all captive bread types. Next we have the marble molly. So this is going to be very similar to the Dalmatian Molly, and it may contain orange or yellow. As far as rarity, it's pretty uncommon. You'll see Dalmatian Molly is much more often. And as far as known types, I've seen it on regular Mollies, Liar Tail Mollies, and Balloon Mollies, at least is the most common. Speckled Molly. So other common names are Coleco or Creamsicle Dalmatian. So the color pattern is a creamsicle with black spots, aka why it's called the Creamsicle Dalmatian. As far as rarity, it's pretty uncommon, and for types, it can be on all captive bird types. Gold mollies, also known as the gold molly. The color and pattern will be a golden yellow or orange throughout the body. It's going to be very common, although less than your black silver on Dalmatian. As far as known types, liar tail and cell fin are the most common. Next, we have the gold doubloon molly. Other names are the gold dust, although sometimes this molly is referred to as being golden white, whereas the gold doubloon is a half gold, half black molly. Rarity, this is pretty common. I often see this as one of the most common mollies in local fish stores. For known types, it's in regular and liar tail is the most common. Next we have the gold panda. So this color is very similar to the gold doubloon. Although there's more variation in golden and black, it doesn't have to be half and half. And it often has spots like a Dalmatian. It's going to be pretty rare, and as far as known types, it's on regular mollies and liar tail. 24 karat gold mollies. Another common name is gold metallic, although this sometimes could be a different type of molly. I did group them together because it was pretty similar color and pattern how you described them, which is gold with a metallic sheen, and sometimes has a white underbelly. Overall, this is going to be rare. As far as known types, it's going to be on regular liar tail and cell fin mollies. Harlequin molly. As far as color, it's going to be gold, white, and black, usually in spots. It's going to have a lot of colors going on in this molly. It's going to be pretty rare, and cell fin is the most common type of molly to find this on. 
green molly. So this is going to be a greenish blue tone and sheen. It commonly has some orange in it and overall it's going to kind of change colors as you look at it from different angles. As far as rarity, it's uncommon and I found it most common in sailfin mollies. Orange mollies. There are a few different names for this known as tangerine, red, or blood red molly. Now, a store could have multiple for these for sale and they could be different types of molly, but they all pretty much look the same, so I did group them together. As far as color and pattern, it's gonna be a full body orange or orange red color. And the tails may differ from variety to variety. The rarity is gonna be uncommon, and for known types, it's gonna be regular balloon and cell thin is the most common. Next, we have sunset. Another common name is red sunset. The pattern's gonna be very similar to orange, an orange red body, there's often going to be rows of metallic speckles. It's going to be a rare molly, and as far as types, it's most common in regular and sailfin mollies. Next, we have the chocolate molly. Other common names are red eye chocolate or cocoa. The color and pattern is going to be dark brown, often with a red eye. It's going to be pretty rare. For known types, regular sailfin and lyre tail are most common. Next, we have the chocolate chip molly. So, for other common names, it's sometimes mixed up with the chocolate molly, although the color and pattern for this is often an orange base with brown spots, where the chocolate molly is all brown. The color and pattern varies greatly for this type of molly, and overall it's gonna be rare. I've seen it most commonly in cell thin and regular mollies. And for the last color we have is an orange tail molly. So this is basically gonna be a marbled molly with the back of the tail being orange. It's going to be a rare molly, and I've only ever seen it in regular mollies. That was a long list, but that wraps up the list of molly types. One thing to keep in mind is there's many types and colors that are crossbred for even more types. I tried to keep the list to unique and common types. With so many types, there's overlap with during research, so if you disagree with something I put or grouped, please let me know. Overall, I had a lot of fun doing the research for this video, and I really look forward to making other species lists in the future. I hope it gave you an idea for all the variations out there besides the ones most commonly seen in stores. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching, and if you did enjoy the video or thought it was helpful, likes on the video and subscriptions to my channel are a big help. Anyway, thanks again, and I'll catch everyone next time.